there's so many great Rust videos out there. I wish, I wish I could make YouTube videos. I'll be able to share all my awesome memories of Rust with other people. But there's no way I can be a YouTuber. You're wrong. <gasps> Anyone can be a YouTuber. Is that you, God? In fact, I'm going to teach you how to make your own Rust video right now. Mom? Starting from which programs to use, how to record and edit your footage. H2 oh style. My God. It's easy as boom, bang, bitch. Right off the bat, there's three solid options for recording software that you can choose that won't have a big impact on your performance. If you have an AMD card, you want to use AMD Real Life. If you have an NVIDIA card, you want to use Shadowplay. But I recommend using Place TV, which anyone can use and is the best option in my opinion. You're able to record in high definition. You can edit, upload clips almost instantly in the program. You can use this built-in editor in Place TV to create quick clips to show friends or admins or simply to break down your longer footages into smaller highlights. In the settings, you want to make it manual recording and set a hotkey to start recording so you can record whenever you want. Make the quality custom, the resolution 1080p, frame rate 60fps, and the bit rate should be 50 megabytes per second. You want to make sure to uncheck the enable watermark option. Skip to the advanced tab and make sure the optimize videos for upload option is unchecked and set a directory folder for all your footage to go to, preferably into your hard drive. You also want to uncheck auto manage space. You want to go follow the link in the description below and follow the simple instructions to download Sony Vegas Pro 14 for free. Once that's done, launch Sony Vegas and the first thing you want to do is to drag in any footage you want to edit into the editor on the bottom. If you play Rust on a stretch resolution because you're a PvP god, then make sure to press no to the do you want to set your blah blah blah. This will make your video stretched out to fill the entire screen. If that didn't work, right click the video in the editor, go to properties and uncheck maintain aspect ratio. Now the second thing you want to do is go to the top left and make sure your video preview is at best and full to have the best preview quality. The most basic tool we will learn first is the split tool. By pressing the S key in your keyboard, this splits a clip into two clips and is what you'll be using most of the time to edit your video. For your intro, you can do a simple fade from black by dragging the top left of your video clip. You can also fade in the music or audio using the same method. Your video is going to consist of tens or hundreds of these little split clips all sewn together. You want to make most of the transitions between the small clips just normal jump cuts, which really means just one clip right next to the other one without anything special. If you want to highlight a significant change, for example, in the video scenery, you may want to use crossfade, which you can do by overlapping the clips together. While editing, pay attention to little bumps you see in the audio clip, as this may be a sign of an important dialogue or a fight happening that you may want to include in your video. You can slow down clips or make them faster by control plus dragging the edges of the clip. For zooming in on certain things, you want to first select the clip you want zoomed. Click the event pan crop button and a window will pop up. To zoom in on something, shrink the F screen and drag it to the place that you want zoomed. You can also lower the brightness or visibility of a clip by dragging down the top edge of a video clip to lower its opacity. You can use this for your intro where it starts out darker and gradually gets to normal brightness. You can achieve this by having half the clip darker, the second half normal opacity, and crossfading the two clips by extending the video clip to overlap. To add text to your video, make another video track above your clips and go to Insert tab and then click Text Media. You can then write whatever you want, but make sure you use a good clean font so it's easy to see. For example, I use Babass. You can also adjust the size of the text by adjusting it on the screen or using the font size. If you want extra emphasis, you can also add shadows to your text. You can also add music just as easily as you did with video. Just be careful with copyrighted music as it can make your video unavailable. You can play around with the volume, but usually 25% works the best for me. If you look closely, you can see little bumps in the music where there is a beat or a drop and that's where you mostly want to do jump cuts to create a better flow in your video. You want to make sure your volume has a nice balance between the music, the voices and the gameplay. If you have too loud music or there's someone screaming in your team that you want to turn down, you can lower the volume just like how you lower the opacity in a video. Since you don't want the decrease of volume to be too abrupt, Use crossfade to ease the music's volume change. You can also just use the simple decibel option on the left hand side of the track to lower or increase the volume. If you want to add your own voiceover, create another audio track and click on the set recording track button. You can then press Ctrl R to start recording your voice 
and your voice will be only on that track. The auto ripple option on the bottom can be useful as it automatically sticks the clips together, but it can get annoying so just be aware that it's a thing so you can turn it off. When you're done editing the video, you want to make sure it will have the best quality and color. Press D twice and it will change your cursor type to a select tool. Select only the video clips, go to video tab, video output effects, and go to color corrector. What I like to do is boost the red and the blue a little bit like this and it'll help with the washout colors of rust a little bit. While you have the video clip selected, go to edit tab, switches, and then disable resample. Disable resample just makes your video much less blurry when you upload it to YouTube. To create a thumbnail really easily in Sony Vegas, just go to a certain part of the video you like the look of, add text to it, and go to the top of the page, click copy snapshot to clipboard, click save snapshot to file, and you'll have it downloaded. Rendering your video is one of the most important steps in video editing. You need to have the right settings to make it look crisp and YouTube ready. Go to the end of the video, select your entire video, click File tab, Render as, go to Main Concept .mp4, find the Internet HD 1080, and Customize Template. And you can just follow my settings, just pause the video or something like that and just try to have the same settings as me. And there you have it! You're a YouTuber now! Hey guys, it's your boy. Thanks for watching my video again. Uh, I'd appreciate some uh, feedback. I'm a god in this game. Alright, see you later guys. Oh, I'm gonna shop by another SCI guy. I see you, I see you, I'm in your left. There's guys, guys coming right now. There's so many of them, dude. Hey baby, kiss me hard, don't kill my vibe. All my feelings on fire. It's all to me. Kill that kid, kill that kid. Kiss me hard, don't kill my vibe. Kill the one. Kill the one, kill them again.